Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen as well as pull out your Bibles today because <laughs> we're going to be in scripture. We're talking about rebellious youth. We're talking about young people who are disrespectful, young people who are lazy, young people who don't like you telling them what to do and they want to be sassy. Oh, Lord Jesus, some of you all are teachers and counselors. Some of you all have your various businesses and you're dealing with the youth and you're saying, wait a minute. There was a time where uh, that sort of behavior was unacceptable, but I keep seeing the same thing showing up with some of these young people. What is this thing? The Lord says nothing has changed. It's rebellion. It's rebellion. It's rebellion. Lord Jesus. And so we're bringing out the scriptures because, see, you've got to be convinced You've got to be sold on the fact that nothing has changed when it comes to rebellious youth. Prior to technology, there was rebellious youth. Prior to record albums, there was rebellious youth. Prior to cars, there was rebellious youth. Some folks like to talk about the good old days. And even in the good old days, there was rebellious youth. When we was poor, busted, broke, and disgusted, there was rebellious youth. When everything was doing well and there were various presidents that Wow, we could respect. There was still rebellious youth. Rebellious youth are not going anywhere. If anything, they're getting worse. You want a prophecy today? They're getting worse. There's going to be rebellious youth that are going to go after adults like never before. Not just verbally, but physically as well. The type of youth that there was a time where teachers would band together and bring some of these youth down. Oh, no, you're not going to come up here and beat us and hurt us and all of that. But the fear, the fear of going to jail because you put your hands on the youth and the fear and the worry and the stress of what somebody might do to you because you said or you did to my child. That is what keeps some of these rebellious youth acting up like they do you've got to be more sophisticated smarter in what you do concerning rebellious youth and you've also got to have a huge network <laughs> and some liability insurance and you got to have all sorts of things in order to deal with these rebellious and let me add lying youth that don't mind telling their share of lies now some of course, rebellious youth are not this way. And we don't ever want to say that all youth are like that because they're not. Believe it or not, there are those that have a spirit about them of goodness. A spirit about them where the Lord himself has put that spirit upon them and they're decent human beings. But those that are children of darkness, the youth that are children of darkness, they sometimes behave in a way as if they don't have a soul because they've learned from rebellious adults how to act, how to deal with, how to so-called put some folk in check and you ain't got to put up with this, that, and the other. Lord Jesus, Hebrews thirteen seventeen, Hebrews thirteen seventeen. Obey them... That have the rule over you. Now we know that there are those individuals who are demonic. Who are evil. Who are nasty, disrespectful over us. Even as adults. And there is the type of rules, regulations, procedures, what have you. That you follow. That are reasonable. But then there are those that are unreasonable. And we know that we consult with the one true God and God will move us, move us away from those people who are like that. So then obedience is no more. But when a person or group has these sorts of rules, regulations, policies, procedures that are reasonable, why is there the rebellion? Not only are we being obedient, but we are submitting ourselves. And some of you parents did not teach your children that. 
and said you taught them to go against what the other parent says and go against what the grandparent says and you don't have to listen to the teacher and you don't have to listen to your big brother or your sister and all of them are toxic and they're ugly and they're messy and whatever and meanwhile for some folks they were the messy toxic ugly disrespectful and nasty ones come on if they're honest with themselves so there isn't any wonder why there's the rebellion at the camp and the rebellion over at so-and-so's house and then there's the rebellion when uh, they're riding the bus and there's the rebellion when they're in a classroom and the rebellion in gym class and we can go on and on but once again reasonable reasonable rules regulations policies procedures and yet they want to rebel but the bible says obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you even in business I mean, these are going to be the future leaders of America and elsewhere. And there's no profit in being disrespectful and rude and mean spirited, especially in the customer service industry. No, we are going to report you, <laughs> you who want to roll your neck and bat your eyes or you who want to slam things down or turn your back while I'm still talking to you or you who are snippy real quick whenever somebody asks you to do something or can you add a little more to whatever the order might be <sighs> what fire them bye see you some folks got to learn the hard way don't they some of us we had our share of write-ups back in the day some of us back in the day we got our behinds wit you said what you did what get over here hmm and some are still getting their behinds wit and i'm not arguing with those parents and i'm not having an attitude with them if anything i'm commending those individuals who use discipline in a way that is appropriate and that will put these children on a fast track to being better human beings in the future. I got a lot of compliments from teachers back in the day. And one of them said, I know your parents, I know your parents must... <laughs> must have rules you know i said not only rules but my dad he'll take a stick to your backside oh okay okay i understand uh-huh i understand one teacher was appalled by that and said well do you want me to call do you want me to call someone about that and i shook my head no mm -mm. you see we got some people who they just went overboard with their so-called discipline. And there were times where I felt that really, it's not that bad. It's not that serious. I'm not going to lie to you and say that. Oh, well, you know, I, I turned out to be a great person because, because no, it wasn't always that way. So that's why you've got to be very careful how you do things. That's why I said you do things in a very smart way an effective way, a way that God tells you. And yes, there is scripture. There is scripture about using the rod, but some folks just went overboard. And instead of building a child up, they broke their spirit. They broke their will. They broke them down. Lots of years dealing with low self-esteem. In my own case, so there's better ways of handling some things. As children get older, there's a whole lot of stuff you can take away. Oh, no, not my phone. Oh, yes, your phone. Oh, no, not my television. Oh, yes, your television. Oh, no, not my bed. You keep jumping on a bed. Yes, I moved out the top mattress and the box spring when they was little. 
no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, they don't want to receive that. Let me take the mattress and the box spring out. You see? Oh, I oh, do I hear jumping on the bed? I don't want to lose my bed. I know you don't. <laughs> There's consequences to these smart mouth, disrespectful, and downright rebellious children. Proverbs 14, 16, and 17. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. Ah, you don't tell me what to do. I don't care you if you are 30 some years old, you sit your behind down. I don't have to do anything. You just leave me alone, mama. What? You're in my house. You're going to follow my rules. I don't have to do anything. I'm a grown at. Oh, uh, did he just get hit by his mother? <laughs> I mean, some people get carried away. I'm grown. Yeah, but. You don't go off the deep end. Yeah, every now and again, a adult son or daughter is going to raise a voice. Just like a parent is going to raise their voice. But it's all in how you do things and what you say. But a wise man feareth <laughs> and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. Proverbs, once again, 14, 16, and 17. And that's why some of your relatives hate, hate some of your other relatives because that's all they do is disrespect. That's all they do is rebel. They don't turn it off. Okay, I get it. You're upset with your mom and you're upset with your dad. But do you have to keep going on and on and on and on and on with it? And we saw some of this take place. Okay, you made your point. You told us we can make our point. But then when you're dealing with your parents, you keep going on and on. You see? Lord Jesus. Well, I'm 50 some years old. Yeah, but your mother is 70, 80 plus years old. She ain't got to keep putting up with that. And that's why some that's why some don't get what they get or what was owed or due to them or what was promised. And then some simply like us, we were simply bold and honest. And you don't get anything for being that way either, whether you talk low or whether you talk loud. But that's a whole nother topic. First Samuel fifteen twenty two and 23. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Right? The Lord, he speaks to us. Sometimes during battle, there's that quiet voice that says, Shut up. <laughs> Be quiet. Walk away. I remember quite a few times dealing with relatives and I heard the voice and I said, you know what? I could go on and on at this point, but I'm not. And I shut it down. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion, listen closely here, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Well, I don't participate in no witchcraft. No, but rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and not only rebellion but uh some of you others and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry so keep on bragging about how stubborn you are when some of you parents talk about how stubborn my baby is but i love him and all that no 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 there's nothing cute about that there's nothing nice about that there's nothing admirable about a stubborn or rebellious man or woman husband or wife son or daughter niece or nephew, cousin. There's nothing cute, nice, happy, cool about that. Rebellion and stubbornness, sin of witchcraft, iniquity and adultery. That's what it's compared to. I don't respect no authority. Shoot, authority don't respect me. Well, you better change your tune because uh, there's some folks out there that would really love to help you. But that attitude is what's keeping you. Come on. Somebody's like, uh-huh. That attitude is what's keeping you from 
growing. And the only time that folks really get the epiphany that I need to stop acting this way is when they get tired of failing, when they get tired of rejection, when they get tired of people keep telling them over and over again about their nasty, stubborn, arrogant ways. Some folks decide that I'm not going to change with my parents because my parents keep going off about it. I'll change though with my friends and then eventually I'll come back around and be better when I get around my parents okay and some of us that's what we did it took your friends to reject you it took your friends to say I don't like your nasty attitude it took your friends to say why are you so stubborn this isn't something that you need to hold out on okay you just do the right thing you see and then the epiphany oh my god yes my mom was right my dad was right lord jesus he she double for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected. It all comes back to truth and God shows his word in so many different ways. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. You wanted to be king. You wanted to be president. You wanted to be the owner. You wanted to be the leader. You wanted to be that one that has a house on the hill, but mm, you managed not to get it right. Why? Because rebellion followed you. Stubbornness followed you. It followed you when you were dating. It followed you when you got married. It followed you when you became a parent. It followed you when you became a parent some more and some more, right? It just seems to follow you. You think that you're wise. You think you're great. You think you're good. And God says you are none of it. Woo, Jesus. Let me tell you, that's the kind of truth that the Lord spoke to me years ago. You're none of it. He showed me this ugly, decrepit, this, this messed up looking image. And I said, what is that? He said, that's the sin that's on you. Lord Jesus. Quit fighting the truth. My truth isn't just sounding like a scripture in a Bible. My truth doesn't just show up out of a minister's mouth or somebody who is yelling on the street corners with a white collar. My truth shows up even when your friends are telling you, you are falling away. You are not doing so well. My truth shows up when there are those professors and those counselors that just want you to do better. And you reject it. You could be this and you could be that. Some of you all, you know, when they say, how come you aren't doing A, B, and C? You know, you could have been, but you're not. Blame your stubborn, rebellious self. That's who you blame. As much as we went through growing up, we also know that there was a part that when we was getting what we was getting, toxic, ugly, nasty, disrespectful, whatever, from adults, we also inherited their rebellion and their stubbornness. So it does come back on them. Oh, no, that's all on you. No, 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 no. That's why some parents don't want to hear when their children come back around and say, I'm so much like you, it's scary. Oh, uh, you don't want to be like me, but yeah, you condition me to be like you. Rebellious, stubborn. And so when you look at me and you say, you should be more than what you are, understand that you did have a hand in some of that and if you wanted me to be more than what I am today then you should have given your rebellion and your stubborn heart to the one true God before I even got here before I was even an itch in your pants God he was dealing with these adults long before we got here and they thought they was fine and they was good. And they was just as disrespectful and nasty. Whether they said things out loud or whether they kept them in their heart concerning their own parents. While they talk about the good old days and what they would never have done or said to their parents. Hmm. But the Lord said, I knew your heart. And I knew what you were thinking. And I knew what you wrote on the paper. And I knew what you told your siblings. So don't get it twisted. You may not have said that to your parents because you knew better. But you did say a lot under your breath or in your mind 
or I can't wait till I get out of here. And this, you know what, got the nerve to tell me what I should be doing. And I don't like them anyway. And they could go to, you know what, and that's not my family anyway. And I know I got more of a family with my spouse's people than with them. Oh, the Lord heard all of that. Lord Jesus. I told some of you a long time ago, I'm coming where you are. Your secret, though, is safe with me. Rebellion and stubbornness. First Peter 1, 13 and 14 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Somebody just needs to put their hand up and say, when's the last time I rededicated my life to Christ? When's the last time that I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior? When's the last time that I was baptized? When's the last time that I got into the word of the Lord via a Bible study? When was the last time? And God, I'm telling you from personal experience, he will erase that rebellion and that stubbornness. Next thing you know, you're nodding your head instead of fighting with people when they advise you, (laughs) when they give you constructive criticism. You find yourself going, oh, you know what? You got a point and you're not losing sleep over it. You don't have no stomach issues because they told you something that's wrong. You're like, you know what? Yeah, let me do that better. Oh, wow. She's not having an attitude. She's not giving me the silent treatment. She's not, you know, (laughs) wanting to uh, wish death on my firstborn because I told her something. Wow. You see? Lord Jesus, <laughs> somebody is coming around. I can feel it in the spirit and obedient or I'm sorry, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. You know how good little children are. Yes. OK. Yes, mommy. Yes, daddy. And they just run and they do what they're told. That's the way God wants you to be. <laughs> That's the way he wants all of us to be. The Lord says, go, okay, you get ready, you grab your car keys, you get in the car, you go where he tells you to go. The Lord says, take that money out the account, give it to this one and that one. Oh, okay, no problem. You see, you're not rebellious, you're not stubborn, you just do, you just do. You're not talking yourself out of anything, you're not saying what about, what if, and all that, you just do. Like that obedient little cute little girl or that little boy that, okay, mommy, okay, daddy. Isaiah 119 and 20, if ye be willing and obedient, guess what's going to happen? There is some good stuff that happens when we're willing and we're obedient. I'm a witness. Ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. Some folks literally in these foreign lands, they've been devoured with the sword for their rebellion. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord is hath spoken it that is the prophetic for someone no it's not going to be a literal sword but you are going to get a cutting away because of your rebellion a cut off i'm hearing that in the spirit you're cut off some folks are cut off sexually from their partners because of their rebellion and their stubbornness some folks are cut off of monies because of their rebellion and their stubbornness some folks are cut off of housing assistance vouchers payments because of their rebellion and their stubbornness they told you to supply the right documents you said i i don't know you lied or you covered up or you didn't produce enough for some individuals so you get cut off you get cut off when you don't do what's right when you don't fill out the paperwork when you don't supply what people tell you to supply rebellion shows up in so many different ways we can easily receive it when it comes to the youth But can you receive it when it is dealing with the adult issues, adult responsibilities? You can tell a youth, stop rebelling at the school, not listening to your teachers, showing up late, not doing your homework. But can you receive it when your boss tells you to stop showing up late, to stop looking at your phone, to take care of your customers? You see? Woo! Stepping on some toes. First Peter 2, 13 and 15 says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Yeah, it's hard when in some of those ordinances you don't agree with. That's why you go to the Lord. 
and you pray and you ask the Lord, Lord, wait a minute, there's something here that's not quite right. I know what the Bible says, but can you help me with this thing? Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors or unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers, for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. I know some people abuse this particular scripture, but when you are using it in the way that God wants you to use it and you can go to him. It is a very good scripture and it is something that you can teach the rebellious youth that are in your circle. Because if you want them to be successful, they're not going to be successful always fighting up against everything that adults tell them, always questioning everything. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Woo. And we see that, don't we? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. You could start by teaching children about Jesus. The great example of one who was submissive. He didn't show up wanting to go up against everything that was out there, wanting to question everything that was in the world. He had a mission. He had a mission. He had a mission. You've got to give these children a mission, a mission that is going to elevate, help humanity, not destroy. A mission that is going to bring about positive change mentally, physically, and spiritually. Not the type of mission that's going to fight up against things that aren't even broke. So why try to fix them? The type of things that people are okay with. The majority are like, you know what? This isn't something that is destroying our family. This isn't something that is causing us to do some things that are drastically different or to cause the curse of God to come upon us. Lord Jesus, they are destroying everything. These individuals who grew up to be rebellious and stubborn, they are destroying everything that is good and righteous and truthful and respectful because they're mad, because they're scorned sons and daughters. We're going to flip the system. We're going to do things the way we want to do. And we're going to have sex with whoever we want to have sex with. We're going to just just hoot it up. Have a good old time. Woohoo! And all they end up doing is causing more cleanup. You left behind your trash, your mess, your sickness, your disease. Now we got to come up with more ways to fix things, to cure Lord Jesus and God, he's saying there's consequences to the rebellion, to the stubbornness. Don't be an aid in that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For ye were sometimes darkness, weren't we all? For ye were sometimes darkness. This is in Ephesians 5, 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And children of light are not rebellion, rebellious and stubborn individuals. Once again, stop bragging about that sort of thing. That is something you should be working on. Romans 6, 12 and 13. Let not sin, because a lot of the rebellion, right? And a lot of the stubbornness is rooted in sin. You sin once, you sin twice, you sin all your life. You're always into something and you're never asking God for uh, his guidance. You're you're never confessing sin. You're never repenting. So it just festers and it grows and it grows. And the next thing you know, you are influencing other people to be like you. And then when you take children mere children and do that to them 
That's blood on your hands. And some people to this day are wondering why I can't seem to get a break. Why do I always have these bad stories, negative experiences? Because of what you did. You're rebellious, you're still stubborn, and you're recruiting others to be just like you. And so now they got a bunch of negative experiences. And they're walking in darkness rather than in light. Lord Jesus. If we submit ourselves to God and we resist the devil of a man or woman or beast, those folks, they're going to flee from us. I'm submitting myself this day to the, to the Lord, to God. I've been doing it. But sometimes the enemy will come with his little tricks and his treats and I'll say, oh, and the Lord's like, you don't want that. You don't want that. James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Thank you, Lord. Let's go over to Ephesians 4, 17, 18 to close out this message. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. Don't walk like your mama and your daddy. Don't walk like... So those so-called teens who are cool and you're trying to reach the youth. So you want to act rebellious and stubborn. You too old for that foolishness. Okay. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Let me tell you something. If you want to teach the youth, you got to deal with the rebellion and the stubbornness that's in your heart. That is the meat of this message. If you want to be that one that impacts the rebellious, stubborn youth that you can still reach, you got to deal with what's in your heart. And then you've got to have a testimony. You've got to have an experience that says, this is how I overcame. And you've got to give them the checklist on what they need to do in order to overcome their rebellion against authority. To overcome their stubbornness when it comes to change and being a better human being, being more productive in society. That is the meat of this message. And I hope you caught hold. Thank you, as always, for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Blessings to you.